morning guys, welcome back to Alan's Allotment. It's the 30th of July, 2022. And as you can see, another beautiful day in sunny Cumbria. We know it's summer because the rain is much warmer than it normally is in winter. But I'm not complaining. Because today we'll be going inside the polytunnel, making another door getting the backs of the doors meshed up and uh, putting the uh, path borders in the compost and then depending we may even get a bit of planting done four inch screws because we're using three inch by four inch timber uh, sorry three inch by two inch timber and we want this to be strong and I've just done it wrong I'll put it on the outside instead of the inside That's how not to do it guys. Let's do this the right way around. That's the way we want it. Like that. If I could hear my father's voice tell me to move on he would say i'll be just fine yeah he would tell me we have time time to laugh and time to heal a favorite song is on repeat drinking wine until the dawn Hey guys, finally got the door done. It's been absolutely pouring down, but at least it's now done and waterproofed. But I'm just going to let you see what I've done here. So I've made this door so that I can basically remove the windows. And um, that will let a lot more ventilation in. I'm going to have to rethink it though, but I've just got it fixed in place for now because this can also lift up and we can have the ventilation at the bottom. Um, but ideally I want to be able to take this out fully, which I suppose isn't any big deal because there is some flexibility in this. And what I'm going to do is I'll just put a screw, one screw in there, one in the bottom board, just to hold this from moving in the wind in winter 
and uh, I was losing it, basically. So, what I've done is I've made them on sliders this time, and we'll just have one or two screws to hold them in place for winter. And then uh, that should be nice, quick, easy way to ventilate the allotment. So as you can see, we finally got this door finished. And what we'll do is we'll put a bar on the inside on this one and on the outside on the other. And um, yeah, we can now remove these screws that we had holding the frame in place when we were uh, making the door once we've got our bar fixed. So that took a lot of thinking out because I wanted these to be movable and as you can see they're a little bit flimsy but a single screw into this or a screw there and a screw there, screw there and a screw there is going to hold that securely because it's in grooves, it's in tongue and grooved wood. And I was wondering how I was going to do this. I have a router somewhere, but I don't know where it is. And um, I thought, I know, I've got some uh, tongue and grooved floorboarding, thick stuff. And it's just right for this polycarb for the groove. So I just butted them up tight together. So I give it a nice tight slide. Um, and as I say, a screw in here and a screw in there, a screw in there and a screw in there for winter. That will hold it. It's not going to, wind's not going to rip it out. And likewise, with the top one, we'll just put a screw in here and a screw in here that will stop that one. But I can also get, I've got air coming up through the back of there as well. Um, and we obviously need to get the netting on the back. And I think I might do something similar with that door. But for now, because of the weather, it's protected. I've got some airflow coming in here. And at least it's weathered. Uh, for now, once I get them couple of screws in, just to tack it in place in case the gills get up. Uh, we don't want to lose it after we've cut it all to size. And, uh, well, yeah, it wants battened down now because the weather's atrocious. But when the weather's fine, I can just take the two screws out and lift it out for ventilation. So, that's what I came up, that's the idea I came up with there. So just to show you what I was meaning on trying to explain, is we've got tongue and groove in here and these slide into the grooves and we've got two screws in there two in the bottom and I've put four in the top just because it's a smaller piece but you can see what I've done here I've overlapped and there's the top of the other sheet and all I did was I fixed these I made these slightly longer and overlapped them and screwed them on to there so they're on a slight angle which means this overlaps and the water runs on the outside instead of trickling down on the inside so we haven't got a massive amount of progress but we have got some so what I've done now is I started cleaning here and I've got some more fluke board and I cut a board if you remember there was a hole a bit of the scaffolding board was slightly rotted down in this corner there was a bit of a hole so I've put some three quarter inch external ply in there and screwed it to the scaffolding boards and now I've just started lining the internals in here and uh, it's just time consuming but if you do this you waterproof your wood and it's going to last far far longer than it would if you didn't and all the water out of the soil so not only that the wood would draw water out of the soil whereas with a plastic coating it won't and it protects the wood so it's a uh, cheap fix but it's very time consuming but it is what it is as you can see we've been really busy I haven't videoed it all because uh, well I just need to get on it's um, half past five in the evening now. I've been up here since about probably nine o'clock. But I've got this board in here. Then I've got lined all the way around in the internals, which is all time consuming. I've got the post braid in and then this new board built for the path. 
and all the backside of this is also lined with the black visqueen stuff um, flood board. So basically I'm now just throwing a few bags of compost in here and uh, getting this first layer down ready for the hold, well hold the cardboard down and hold everything in place basically. And I've just been reckoning up, I think I've bought a hundred bags of compost this year. So let's, let's say they were all 40, only 40 litre bags, then uh, that's 4,000 litres that I've put into the garden this year. Well, I, it's not actually, um, I've got 10 bags stored away in the shed for winter so that I've got some early on in the season for sowing seeds etc. I've got a couple of bags of well rotted cow manure as well to top dress this when I'm finished and uh, but yeah I've got another 10 in the car now plus all of these there's 20 in here and I'm not sure how far this is going to go but I've got another 10 just in case uh, and we'll see how we get on. Right guys, I'm not going to bore you to death watching me do this. I just want to show you the progress I've got so far. I've got, I don't know, maybe six or seven bags of compost in here and I'm just breaking up all the lumps and make it nice and fine. And again, this in itself is slow going, but if you want to do the job, do it right. And yes, it's time consuming and it's hard work, but then allotments are hard work. Don't let anybody fool you that you can just walk onto an allotment and uh, just grow stuff and sit back and relax because you can't. It's hard work keeping on top of them. But it's also very, very rewarding when you get your harvest. Catch you later. Right, I'm well and truly whacked out. <laughs> it's six o'clock at night. And I'm just having my final cup of coffee before I go down home. So I have had some lunch, I had some uh, sandwiches earlier with a cup of coffee. I had my breakfast before we came up here. And uh, I've got to be honest, I didn't think it was going to take as long as it has. But the preparation is all in lining the backboards lining the scaffolding boards. That actually takes a surprising amount of time uh, and of course cutting the scaffolding boards, knocking the posts in, making sure it's symmetrical um, just because I'm a bit uh, OCD that way. So these are a little over 10 inches deep and all of the citrus trees are going to be coming in here because as I said in an earlier video they're all suffering really bad in pots and I just don't have the time to keep on top of them. And they're basically being neglected. So they're going to go in here, which is no dig, and they're basically going to put the roots down into the soil. Once this cardboard rots away, which it will do pretty quickly. As you can see in here, I've brought in the uh, blueberries. These are all the blueberries that are, I bought this season. And one or two of them are looking, especially that one at the back, is all brown leaves and the sun scorched, the too much water and again now I know they like edacaceous compost and I have some so what I'm going to do is probably I don't know divide the bed about here and put a board in and I'm going to put edacaceous compost in this half for the blueberries never mind right I'm going to stop bobbling, I'm going to have this cup of coffee. I'm going home for some food and rest because my back is going crazy. Thanks for popping along, thanks for putting up with me. And uh, as always guys, wherever you are in the world, please do stay safe, be practical, keep yourselves out of arms way. And I'll see you again in the next video.